Hey everyone, my name is Alexandra and I am a watercolor artist. Today I want to talk to you guys about a technique that is super fundamental when you're painting with watercolor. It's a technique that I started doing, I didn't actually know what it was called. Um, so if you paint with watercolor already, this is something that you may already be doing and just not quite know much about it. But what we're gonna learn about is glazing. So I am gonna show you guys just the basic fundamentals of glazing, talk about it a little bit, and then to be perfectly on theme, we are going to practice it by painting a glazed donut. Let's get started. Okay, so first way that I want us to kind of take a look at this technique is just gonna be super practical. We're gonna take one color of paint and I am gonna go ahead. I'm using quinacridone red from Windsor and Newton here. And I'm just gonna start with a nice watery layer of paint. And what I'm going to do is paint just a line across my page. And now I'm gonna let that dry. Okay, so what I have done here is I have painted our first layer. So I'm just gonna add some notes here so that we can see what we're doing as we go. So that is layer one. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go over the exact same spot again with a pretty similar color. And we're just gonna go all the way across. So what you guys will see is a super subtle difference, but by adding a layer on top, I am using the glazing technique. So essentially what glazing is, is just using layers with watercolor and it is such a fundamental technique when you're painting because watercolor often you want to make sure that you're starting from light to dark and by adding layers it allows you to do that so a good way to practice this is just using a monochromatic scheme so i'm using pink on pink on pink and we'll do a few layers so that you guys can see see the difference and see how vibrant we can make it but it's so so helpful when you're painting to just continue to add depth so when I said you guys are probably already using this, it's because oftentimes we are using this by adding the same color on top. I'll show you guys a bit, bit of a different, different style after, but I'll just make a note here that we've done now our second layer, and then we're gonna add another one. So layer two, and now we're gonna go in so again, you guys will notice I'm not mixing any new colors. I'm using the same pink. I'm just gonna make this one a little bit more vibrant just for having a bit more contrast. Okay, and I'm going ahead and I'm painting over what I just painted. So there we have our third layer. And again, you can see how the color builds on itself. So we're gonna let that dry before we move on to the next one. All right, so now we're gonna go in and add another layer on top. And you'll see that just by adding layers, we get more and more of a vibrant pink. So part of our painting, we're wanting to see how much pigment is on our paintbrush, how much water, and that's how we get paint, how light or dark we want but the other thing to look at is glazing and how many layers you've added to your painting. So I try to add up to four layers, sometimes five, um, but I'll work on, if I want it darker from the beginning, I'll work on using more pigmented paint, but this is a good thing for you guys to, yeah, to just practice and play around with and see how layering can work on building your color without actually putting a ton more paint on your paintbrush. So just for the sake of adding brightness, we're gonna do one more layer on this, and then I'm gonna show you guys glazing using different colors. 
So right away you can just see how much brighter it goes and the difference when you paint in all of all of your layers, how you can add so much vibrance to your painting. So if you're struggling with your watercolors drying too light, then you guys can always go back in and add another layer. So now that we've done that, I'm going to show you guys something a little bit different just with mixing different colors in. Okay, so if you guys are following along and want to test this as well, what we're going to do is um, we're going to paint a square with our pink paint that we were just using. Or actually, sorry, we're not going to do a square. We're going to do a line across our page. So I'm going to go all the way across. I'm just adding some paint to make sure that it's equally pigmented. Going across. And now we have to let that dry and then I'm going to go in with some yellow and some blue just so that we can see what happens. Now that our first layer is dry, we're going to add in some yellow. So what I'm going to do with my yellow that I'm painting with is I'm just going to start above and below and I'm going to go right on top. So you guys will see if you look closely in the middle where it overlaps we're getting this orange color so there's with glazing this is super helpful with watercolor because a lot of your mixing to find the colors you want can be done on your paint palette but it gives it such a neat effect when you're doing it right on your paper and often i use it especially if i'm using contrasting colors or complementary colors which i do actually have another tutorial or video on so if you guys want more information on that feel free to watch it but i use the glazing technique a lot when i'm doing that type of painting just to add in contrasting colors to my paintings which really makes things pop and gives a really neat effect so as you practice it, you start to get to know what colors you end up with when you use this glazing technique. So we're gonna do the same thing just to the left here, but I'm gonna paint with blue. And again, you'll see how I get this really nice purple in the middle. So I'm painting these layers pretty light. If you're using more pigmented paint, that will also change the colors that you get in the end. Um, but we're gonna do one more in the middle and I'm just gonna show you guys what it looks like if I do blue and then I do yellow on top of it. So we're gonna let those dry and then as soon as they dry, I'll show you with the yellow. Now that that's dry, I'm gonna go over top of my blue with my yellow. And this will just show you guys more of what happens with our colors when we use this technique. So right away, we see the color transform even more just by adding the layer on top. But the really cool thing about glazing is that often that color that's underneath will still show through. So now I want us to take this technique and we are going to put it into practice by painting a watercolor donut. Um, just for the sake of the painting, I am going to stick with using the primary colors to paint it um, and just show you guys how much we actually can do with these three colors. All right, so I'm gonna switch to one of my round brushes that I have here and I'm going to paint the base of my donut yellow. And I'm just mixing it with a tiny, tiny bit of pink to give it a little bit more of an orangey tone, but we're gonna do most of that color change with our glazing technique. So in case any of you are following along, I just painted a circle. I left a few spots on it white just so that I could have it look like the shine from the donut glaze. Um, and then I had a smaller sort of oval circle shape 
in the middle. So for this first layer, we're just getting it that nice bright yellow color. Okay, and now that I've done one layer evenly spread out, we're gonna let it dry and then move on to the next layer. So now that our yellow layer is dry, we're gonna go over with some pink. And I'm gonna just add some shading in. So I'm gonna focus on going over one side of my donut. And I'm just gonna blend that out a bit into the rest of it. So you'll see how the yellow is still showing through, but it just adds that depth. So now we're gonna go around that inside hole. And just fade that out. So because I want to make it stand out even more, I'm probably going to go over just with a little bit more of a pigmented pink. So while it's still wet, I can add the darker pink in there. And then we'll just fade it out at the edges. I'll do the same for this inside portion here. And then we'll just add a little bit more color into the sides. So now we're gonna let this dry and then we'll go ahead and add more layering in. So now I'm gonna go back over where I painted the pink with another layer of orange. And then after that, we're gonna go in with some blue. So right away, you can see that the donut is no, no longer pink colored, but just by using this layering and glazing technique, you really can create any color that you want. I often will challenge myself and just paint with only the primary colors because I know that, first of all, it just challenges my thinking on getting the colors that I'm wanting to paint. Um, yeah, and mixing on my page instead of on the palette. And yeah, it's, it's fun, it's a good practice to do because it definitely helps with your color theory even as you're painting with a mixture of pre-mixed colors. All right, so you guys can probably see already just how much vibrance that has added. So I'm gonna let this layer dry and then we're gonna go in and add some blue that'll just add a bit more depth and shading. And that will be that for her donut. All right, so the last layer we are going to add in is a bit of blue. I'm just gonna start with it more watered down and then I can add some more pigmented paint as I go, just depending on what, effects, what effect it gives me. So I'm going over where I was painting sort of the brighter pink color. But I'm not gonna go as far in, I just want it right on the edges. Just add a little bit more shading and a little bit more depth. So I'm just gonna mix it out into the rest of my painting. Now I'm gonna do the same concept on the inside here. So 
So with my blue specifically, I'm trying to add it only where I had the pink already painted, just because if I'm doing it right on top of the yellow, I'm gonna get a green color. And unless it was icing, donuts usually aren't too green. So by adding it on top of where I painted the pink, it just gives it sort of like a neutral, darker, gray-brown color that acts as the shading. So that's kind of why I've been focusing on putting it on the left side of my donut. Yes, yeah, so I'm just adding super subtle amount of that. And that is all we have for our donuts. So if you guys are practicing glazing, pick something really simple that you wanna paint and just practice that layering with your colors. So like I have with the donut here, um, if you want to really challenge yourself, do what I did and paint with just primary colors. Um, otherwise, you guys can use whatever colors you want, but just practice that layering and see how it adds so much dimension into your painting. I feel like I talk about this often in my tutorials, but when I'm painting, I try to make sure that I'm not using just the monochromatic scale of colors um, because there's so much that you can add to just make your paintings go from beginners to advanced looking by playing around with different colors. So give it a try. If you guys followed along with this video specifically, make sure to take a picture, share it with me on Instagram at Alexandra Victoria Studio. Love to see what you guys are doing. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me on Instagram as well. If there is something else specific, some sort of technique that you're struggling with that you wanna learn or somewhere that you want more detail, please feel free to leave a comment below and let me know. Otherwise, if you're not subscribed already, subscribe to this channel, like this video, and I will see you next time.